welcome everyone to um, today's uh, exciting announcement. Um, uh, it's not new news to you. Um, obviously, you've, um, you've been aware for a few days that uh, David Noble has been appointed as our 38th coach of the North Melbourne Football Club and we're delighted and very excited to have uh, someone of David's uh, capabilities, of his talent, his experience, um, and obviously his deep knowledge of football joining our, our footy club. Um, David's experience speak for its, speaks for itself. He's, I can't think that he, of a job that he probably hasn't done in the football industry. He's been a, a coach of his own teams. He's been assistant coach. He's been a line coach. Um, he's had incredible depth of experience from everything from a list manager to general manager of football. And as you know, most recently, over the last four or five years has uh, led uh, Brisbane Lions back up the ladder and um, created a, a football program at Brisbane that um, I think uh, the whole industry is uh, uh, looking at and with um, some degree of respect. respect. So um, we're delighted to have David join our footy club. Um, we were extremely impressed throughout the, the course of the interview process uh, with David's um, uh, knowledge of the game, but most importantly, his uh, ability to clearly articulate the way he wants to uh, create a culture um, of high performance, uh, a culture that is built on strong va values that are very similar to those of the North Melbourne Football Club. Um, so we're delighted to have David join us officially uh, as uh, the coach of the North Melbourne Football Club. Uh, I'll hand it over to David to, to say a few words and then happy to uh, dive into any questions you have. Thanks, Ben. Uh, yeah, it's extremely uh, exciting um, to sit here today as the, the 38th North Melbourne uh, senior coach. So, uh, yeah, a day that perhaps in a lot of cases I never thought that would occur. Um, I just wanted to thank my family first and foremost. Um, enormous support uh, collectively across um, the journey that I've been on from a football club, particularly my wife, Sarah, who's just, you know, her unconditional support and love for me is just uh, never ending. I think it'd be remiss of me to not thank the organisations that um, have helped me along and shaped me along the journey from the Up Bay Footy Club to the Oakley Chargers to the New South Wales ACT Rams and the people up there, uh, the Western Bulldogs, um, the Glenelg Football Club, the Adelaide Crows and, and more recently the Brisbane Lions. Um, the respect and support that the organisation gave me in the last three weeks um, for me set a new benchmark. Um, from Andrew Wellington to Greg Swan, and particularly Fags. Um, I've always said publicly that I think Chris is the best developer of people that I've seen, and his support um, from the initial time I spoke to him, um, when North first touched base, uh, he was extremely supportive um, of me taking uh, the opportunity to go into the, uh, the interview process, and uh, I'll have a lot to thank Fags for for a long period of time. Um, I want to thank the club for selecting me. Um, I always and have believed that um, you need to fit the club as well as the club fitting you. Uh, the North Melbourne Football Club's authenticity, its genuineness, its core values fit me. Um, and I believe that my value set will, um, will fit North very, very well uh, going forward. It was a tough process. Um, I really enjoyed the rigour of... Um, uh, earning the right to sit in the chair and, and I thank the, the club and the organisation for the manner in which they conducted uh, the interview process. Um, the last big shout out for me uh, before I hand it over for, for question is, is to our fans, to the sponsors, the fans and particularly our members, the Kangaroo Army out there. Um, I'm bloody excited um, to get stuck into the job um, and to give you guys an opportunity to get back in the gate um, through the year. Uh, and come and watch us play. We want to be a reliable team that you guys can come in week in, week out and watch us grow. There, there'll be some frustration, there's no doubt about that, but um, I've always believed that one of the great values of a member um, is for you to watch players grow. Um, you can align to a particular player and watch them build and grow their career as they come through. So. Um, when we finish appointing our coaches, uh, we're really confident that we're going to give you an opportunity to come and watch us play and walk out of the, the gates um, each and every weekend 
being proud of what we put on the paddock. I'm not going to talk to you about wins. I'm not going to talk to you about losses. Um, we're just going to continue to learn. We'll fall over, we'll pick ourselves up and we'll continue to grow and take these opportunities to continue to get better. Um, that is what I can guarantee. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, I'm absolutely stoked to be sitting here. Um, I've already started making contact with a few of the players over the weekend um, and I've been extremely impressed with uh, the demeanour and the manner in which they've um, handled themselves and the, the energy that they've actually been, uh, been providing me over the weekend. So um, thanks again. Thank you, Ben, to you and the, the board. Um, I'm very humbled and appreciative of the, the opportunity and yeah, I can't wait to um, continue to get stuck into it. Great, thanks, David. Um, happy to take questions from uh, from anyone. David, I'll start. Sorry, Steve. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Congratulations, David. I suppose a couple of weeks ago you were still heading down the CEO path. Yep. I mean, uh, what changed? I mean, that trajectory was heading that way. Yeah, I think when I went on uh, SEN, Steve, I actually hadn't been contacted. Um, I think. Uh, Clearly, the dynamic of the role of the coach has changed in the last five years. Not, I've seen that firsthand. Um, you know, my, my skill set is, um, I guess, a broader approach, the, the capacity to have um, broader knowledge, develop the capacity to build relationships with players. I, I've always harboured ambitions to coach. Let, let's make no bones about it. Um, but I thought my opportunity had passed. Um, and when I did go on radio, I hadn't been contacted. And, um, you know, not long after that, Bruzy rang and had a really in-depth conversation with me over um, a couple of days around um, the skill set that I had and what that offered. Um, and life's about taking opportunities, Steve-O. You know, it's, um, it's really, um, at times, if you've, you've got that ambition um, and it pops up when it's unexpected, then I think you really have to consider it. And this one was, as I said, just the way the club operates, um, what I've seen over the journey of what the club stands for, um, the authenticity just really appealed to me. Dave, you've been in Philly a long time, as you've been mentioned, in different roles. Yeah. When you were at Brisbane in the last few weeks and you were watching what was going on at North Melbourne, what were you thinking? I thought they were a club that actually had made some really tough calls, Sam. They, they were starting to get themselves organised. Um, Scotty Clayton on board. Uh, Johnny Blakey back. I know Blake's, you know, I played with him. Um, Greg Luff, uh, Luffy, Glenn Luff, I've, I've rated for a long time in, in his understanding. Um, and having, you know, some connection with Brady through the GMs, um, it just looked like they were a group that knew the direction that they wanted to take. And uh, and that was exciting. It's pretty, it's pretty significant what has occurred, I guess, on and off the field in terms of changes and the reset. The, you, you, you alluded to it before in terms of ready for some some short-term pain, but does the Brisbane experience help you in that regard and, and take, I guess, some things away there, given where they were five years ago when you, you moved there? Yeah, I, I think so, Ed. And I think the fact that being able to, um, I guess, explain to the, to the board and, and our members now that I get the chance is that, yeah, we, we've got to set a, a path around long-term sustainable success. Um, you know, we're not after... We're not going to chase wins, you know, just for this year. We, we're going to chase wins every single time we're out on the paddock. Let, let, don't make any bones about it. But we need to do it in the manner that's going to be sustainable, uh, that's going to hold up under finals pressure. Uh, and so, you know, th those experiences absolutely um, hold you in good stead. Uh, there's no doubt about that. We've got some young talent. We're going to the draft this year. We'll probably go to the draft again next year. Um, we'll teach. Uh, we'll educate. We'll let them fall over and fail and we'll pick them up and we'll, we'll keep moving them forward. David, what's, uh, what's your assessment of the, of the list? I think it's in good shape, Rob. I really do. Um, I, I liked, watched a lot of the footy. Um, obviously, when you go through and you, you're pitching for the role, there were some really good signs. And what I delivered um, in both of the meetings that uh, I was involved with was all the good aspects of the game that I liked uh, and what I saw. Uh, we've got some good talent, we've got a good blend of youth, uh, we've got some, you know, some good experience that are still there from the skipper and Goldie, um, you know, Robbie Tarrant, Cunnington. So we've got some good experience there and we'll help our young guys, you know, graft off those guys. So um, they've done a 
terrific job in the, the trade period, bringing in to speed. I think it was probably one of the areas that I was a little concerned about in, in my initial deliberation, was a bit around the speed and the movement out of the midfield. Um, but yeah, I, I think they're in, in really good shape. Gold David, um, pretty hard to find. No, sorry, Sammy. Would you prefer to have Ben Brown to be able to be kicking to this year, next year? Look, I, I just want to wish Ben and Higo all the best. Um, you know, in their ventures going forward, they're, they're no longer uh, a part of our footy club. I've got Larky and Cam Zerha to spend some time with. Um, we might reshape the dynamic of what we do up for with a, a second ruckman, um, to be honest. But we're, we're on the long-term growth. Um, that's what we want to do. We want to build those guys' skill sets up so that, you know, over the period of time, they're going to learn. So um, my time and energy, mate, is now going to be tipped into the guys that are on the list and the, the next lot of five that are, that are coming from the draft. There's long-term growth, David, but Ben was pretty bold this morning, um, yep. particularly about the near future. I think he said the next two or three years, top four, pushing for a premiership. Do you sort of welcome that? You spoke to the fans before. Is that sort of prospect realistic for them? Yeah, well, that's in line with what we spoke about, you know, at the board meeting, Lauren. It's, um, I'd love, we've got to have ambition. There's, I, there's no problem with that. Um, you know, the chair made it really clear that, yep, we've got to get ourselves organised, we've got to build a plan, it's got to be long term, but there's no ceiling on our group. Um, so, therefore, that's um, absolutely in alignment with what, you know, we've already talked about. You mentioned you'd spoken to a few of the players already. Yeah. Have you spoken to Reese? Will you speak to Reese? I've, I've reached out to Reese in, in a private conversation and um, that's probably as much as I'd, I'd like to comment, but yes, I have. Uh, David, just take us back to the ACT Rams. I mean, you're coaching and you basically got a tap on the shoulder from Terry Wallace. It, he backed you in from nowhere and, that, and that's where it started. It's a long journey. It's very good of you to bring the Bulldogs in, Steve. That's well done. It's, uh, um, yeah, it Cheers, was. And, and the article that you, you know, that we talked about, mate, was, you know, that 10 to 50, 15 year plan. I was only 10 years out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, look, it's, um, I guess, in reflection, when you put in for a, you know, this is a, this is like a senior executive role, you know, of an organisation, and I think you take all your learnings from all the organisations that you've been involved with, mate, and you, you add the bits in, and you grow from the bits that you've learnt, um, and you add it all in. So, yeah, it's been it's been a fascinating journey. I think the capacity for me to have coached my own team um, gives me great confidence to move back into the chair, you know, from juniors. Um, you know, when I was sort of playing coach it up way into the juniors and then, you know, getting hold of a reserves team, I, I think it's it's valuable experience moving into, you know, into a senior AFL coaching role. Dave, it's Drew from Fox. Um, just with your, all your experience around the AFL in different roles, do you see yourself, I guess, having control and, and input over all those areas, almost like a Sir Alex Ferguson sort of manager role? Uh no, I, I think I've got to be really clear, Drew, and, and um, understanding that, you know, I, I don't want to have any involvement in, like, the footy area from Brady's perspective. I want to make sure that the, the assistant coaches are, feel really confident that they've been delegated authority. Um, my first and foremost um, point with the players will be building those relationships, getting to understand them um, and the staff and making sure that everyone's across the information that I delivered to, to the board and have a really clear pathway and understanding and, and alignment, I guess, if you like, um, as to how that sort of looks at the end of the day. So uh, I won't be taking, you know, main training sessions. That's I'll have an input and I'll have an involvement. There'll be certain aspects that I'll want to get right uh, within there, but we hope to bring some experience in through our assistant coaches. I mean, John Blake is a great example. Um, and we just need to be consistent with the standards, mate, that we set. Tasmania connection, David, having a, a link back there. How do you see that and the uh, the clubs pushing to Tasmania and the, the, the involvement um, in the future? How do you see that uh, and your background there? Yeah, well, I think purely just by being a, a Tasmanian with a couple of others here with Scotty Clayton and Brady, Mitch, I think is that's probably is where the connection goes. I mean, we're absolutely invested in Arden Street, you know, the development, the precinct, um, 
inner city precinct growth is very exciting um, from what I've seen and what I've discussed with the board. But yeah, the two or three games or four games that we've got down there, mate, will be great for us to continue to expand our, our membership. Um, you know, as I said to you before, mate, the, the stick of our members you know, this year is just phenomenal. Um, we'd love to grow it. We want people to jump back on board. We want them to be as excited as I am, as our players are. Um, but I think for what it is, uh, having those three or four games in Tassie is, um, is great. What are you going to have to work on, David? It's been a while since you've uh, had the board and started uh, issuing instructions. <laughs> what do you think you'll have to concentrate on for, for a start? Might have to get some winter clothes to start with, Rob. It's bloody pouring down here today. Um, yeah, what am I going to have to work on? Um, well... I think as the, the decision making sort of through the game will be an interesting one to go back and explore. I'll need to make sure that I'm on point with that, but I'll have good support in, in that area. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, running match committee, those type of things, um, spending more time with your strength and conditioning guys, that'll be sort of a little bit different to sort of the broader discussions if, that I've normally had. But yeah, I, I don't think it'll take me too long um, to start to get my head around that. It's, um, it's been interesting. The, the couple of days, Saturday, Sunday, where I've started calling the players, I haven't for one minute have I thought about any management type of questions, discussions, GM thought processes. I've actually found it really easy to just to drop that and move back into the coaching cycle. And uh, yeah, that, that's been really positive from my own perspective. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to so I guess just retooling myself with uh, with a new sort of skills for for the coaching. Chris, um, obviously, he's sort of almost opened the path, the different yeah. pathway into coaching for, for many people now. What were his sort of parting words to, to you? Well, I, I went around, uh, gave him a ring, knocked on the door. We had a cup of tea and he said, what's going on? I said, well, this is going on. And he just had the biggest grin, um, like a big Cheshire cat. And he said, you absolutely have to have a go at it. And I, I said to him, look, have you got any regrets? He said, no, not one. Not one. And we coached against each other at the TAC Cup. We coached against each other at AFL Reserves. And now we're coaching against each other at AFL Senior Level. And it's, uh, it's a great story. He's, um, as I said, he's a, he's a great person. He's a great coach. I've learned a, a lot um, from the time that I've had with him. I'll miss him and I'll miss the club um, up there. But... Uh, We've got we've got work to do down here. Speaking of coaching against uh, Nobs, you're going to coach against your son. How's that going to go? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure yet, Steve. Eh? I've watched him this year. I found myself a couple of times in the box just tracking him a little bit. But um, yeah, he's attacking half back. We might have to play a defensive forward on him. <laughs> David, you um, you said I think at the start that Rusey was the first one that called you. Yep. What role will he have at the club going forward, if any? Yeah, I, I'm really keen for him to have a role, Sam. Um, I think we can absolutely utilise his his knowledge, his experience, his coach to two clubs. Um, for me, he'll be a great sounding board. Board, I'm sure he will counsel for me. Um, you know, on a number of times. He'll be great for our assistant coaches. I mean, he worked with Johnny Blakey, but he, you know, he could help out there. He'll be a great mentor for maybe some of our players. Um, he could help us out internally. You know, Brady may be able to use him. I'm sure Ben will be able to use his, you know, acumen with the board. Um, so, I, look, I'm really looking forward to, to working with Rusey. I've known him a, a long time. Not intimately, but I've known him a long time. And uh, I think he's got some, some great experiences that can only make us as an organisation better. What's the process going forward with the assistants? How many more do you need and, and who are the guys and what's the, I guess, the, the responsibility or roles you're looking for for, for those remaining uh, positions? Yeah, we've got two left, Mitch. We're, um, we're just coming up with a list at the moment to, to see what's available, um, the type of player, uh, the type of coach that we need. You know, we want some great characters to come in to, again, build that relationship, that foundation of, of honesty, um, trust. Um, you know, if we can do that, um, we've got a forward and a midfield line that are, that are available. So they're, they're the two that we're, we want to fill. We're, not, we, we're in a hurry, but we don't want to rush the decision, if that makes sense. So we'll, we've just got to take our time and work out how, who's available, what the process looks like. But, um, yeah, obviously, having been around, mate, there's a lot of people that I've you know, had contact with and, and the like. Whether or not we can get, um, you know, 
people that we ideally like. We're not quite sure yet, but certainly we'll, we'll try our best to get the right people in. Have you made up your mind what you're going to do with pick two? And you, will you take it to the draft or will you split it and try another couple of first rounders? No, we'll, we'll still have that discussion, Rob. We, we, I mean, pick two is great. Um, don't get me wrong, we haven't had that high a pick for a while. But, um, yeah, the, the options there. I, I think with those things, mate, they, they would have already had discussion. We had a quick brief um, this morning on list management. The, the guys are well, well um, down the path with some of their strategy, um, which I got briefed on this morning I'm absolutely on board with. So, um, yeah, look, if, if it happened to be that we were able to split it out and it gives us an advantage where we can, you know, take some extra picks, um, then well and good. If not, we'll just take the talent that's there. Uh, David, do you see Jaden Stevenson perhaps uh, a midfield winner as well, not just a stay-at-home forward? Yeah, I do, Steve. Eh? I had a good chat to Jaden. I've watched him a bit. Obviously, I was lucky enough to get to a few games last year in Queensland when um, at the Gabba, albeit with approval. Um, and I saw him a couple of times on the wing. I really like what he had to offer um, as a bit of point of difference. He's got speed. He can carry. He's got great decision making with the ball. He can kick it, you know, long and short. So his capacity to deliver inside fifty with that connection is really good. Um, yeah. I, I, I'd like to have some versatility through our, our running areas, our you know, half-backs, wings, half-forwards. Um, we've got to continue to, to grow that midfield. Um, yeah, we've got to find some of those guys, other spots to maybe relief from and, and have that versatility. I, I know it was touched on earlier, the, the expectation that you had for David and, and fairly lofty. You, you're not, I guess, no concern in terms of having that set so early in, in the piece in terms of um, top four in, in three years and that sort of thing? Well, I think, um, I think if a club is not ambitious, then it's really not serving its members uh, properly. I mean, you know, every, every club in the competition ultimately wants to win a premiership and the, the best way to do that is to be a consistent uh, performer in the, the, the top four. Um, you know, timeframes are always difficult things to, to nail down, but... Um, I think it's realistic that, you know, within that, that time period, we, we, we should be competing at that level and that should be our, our ambition and that should be the goal that we set ourselves as an organisation. Um, we're not going to get there, you know, immediately. There's, there's still, you know, um, parts of the puzzle to put together and there's foundations to, to build on. Um, but ultimately, that, that's our goal and, and I don't think we should, should apologise for it. Um, we have to be ambitious. Um, we have to set our sights um, on the ultimate on the ultimate prize. And I, I think um, you know someone like David is is um, realistic about the time frame, but also you know ambitious and will put the right pieces of that puzzle together. You're not wary of doing that, Ben. Uh, the club was pretty open about making finals this year as well, and uh, that didn't quite go to plan. No, but um, no, it didn't, Rob. But but uh, again, I, I think every club goes out every year to, to um, you know, ultimately achieve a finals position. Um, uh, you know, we've, we've got to see some really good growth and development in, in our playing group. Um, we, we expect that that will, will come and come consistently over, you know, over the next couple of years. And then ultimately you put yourself in that position. Um, but it's about getting the foundations right, um, getting the right culture in place, getting alignment from all the different areas of the, the organisation and then ultimately about getting the right people in the right right positions. And you know, I think with David taking on the coaching role, we've 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 um, we've taken a big step forward. Can I just ask you a question of, of the other Ben or maybe Brady, whoever's in the best position to, to answer it. But David made it sound like Paul Roos might have an official role next year. Is, is that the case? Yeah, so thanks for the question, Sam. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that and we'll shape it with David and with Ruzi and But Ruzi will probably be working with quite a few of us, to be honest, um, from a leadership perspective, mentoring perspective, football operations, you, know, you name it. Um, he, Ruzi's going to play a very critical role for not just David, but for a few of us as well across the club. So Sam, maybe I can, Sam, maybe I can chip in there also. Um, Paul, Paul's role was never just about being on the selection panel. It was always about um, having a longer-term view and a longer-term involvement in um, 
in the club and the, the growth and development of the footy program. So, um, you know, what he actually focuses on specifically will will sort of uh, shape up over the next next month or two as we we've achieved the first step of what his his involvement was. But um, as Ben said, you know, he's got a uh, he'll have a lot of input in a lot of different areas uh, over the course of the next year. So you managed to drag him away from Hawaii. How hard was that, Ben? Well, he's not here yet, um, um, but uh, he will be once the, I think early in the new year, he expects to, to be back in Melbourne um, and, uh, you know, will be an active participant, not only on Zoom meetings, but even face-to-face. Just one for Ben Amafio. Um, are you able to confirm that the, the term for, for David will be a rolling contract and not a fixed uh, deal? And, and if so, how that benefits the footy club in terms of um, the future and what you want to get out of that? Yeah, Mitch, it, it'll be a it'll be a rolling contract, absolutely. And just can you just take us through the rationale behind that and what you, I guess, why you go for that rather than a, than a fixed term? Well, I, I think um, as we've seen with with uh, with COVID and the economic situations that we're all in, it, currently it uh, it probably doesn't make sense to have a lot of fixed costs in your business. You know, part of the reason why North Melbourne's had such a good year off the field, you know, we've been able to wipe off two hundred fifty thousand dollars of debt. We've been able to get a, a profit of over two hundred thousand um, dollars. The reason we're able to do those things is because we run a very tight ship. We try and reduce our fixed costs and reduce our reduce our exposure, and uh, we, uh, you know, other than other than our players, no one in this building uh, has a fixed contract, me included. And just just one for Brady um, around your role next year, Brady. Given um, David's experience and his, you know, time in, in as a head of footy, how that how your role will change uh, in twenty one compared to what it was say in twenty um, with Reese as a first time senior coach. Yeah, Mitch, I don't see my role changing at all with with David's appointment. Obviously, with his experience, um, I'm going to be able to lean on him a lot more. He's been in this seat for for many years, um, so. It's, uh, it's going to be a real benefit for me to be able to learn from David as well. But, you know, my role is to make sure he's got the resources around him to be the best senior coach he can possibly be. And if he's having to worry about uh, other matters outside of that, then I'm not doing my job properly. So um, he's got a lot on his plate. And, um, yeah, my role is to make sure he can, he can focus on the players and, and his coaches and, and um, make sure we're delivering on the field. Brady, just while we've got you, just to hit you on a, a bit of a wider one, um, away from the announcement, we've got the meeting happening today with, with list managers in the AFL, we understand, regarding things like back-ended contracts and list sizes. Where, where do you uh, sort of sit on where things lie with that? Do we need a bit of a shift, do you think? Well, one thing we've done um, is to, to cut pretty hard. Obviously, um, at the end of the season, we... We did our delistings and, and it was quite substantial. So uh, we made our decisions knowing that change was coming and we wanted to have flexibility going forward. So uh, we're really confident in the position we're in um, that we can cater for any any changes that occur. So um, we're more than welcoming the changes. Um, we've got flexibility uh, with a draft coming up, coming up that um, we're really excited about to bring in some, some more youth. Um, but we've also got the opportunity to bring in uh, potentially a DFA or add to our rookie list. So we've got some some real avenues to, to add to our playing list still. And uh, we're really happy with that situation because we cut so deep to start with. It gives us that flexibility going forward. So um, the guys have done a great job. Uh, Luffy, Scotty and, and Finn have done a really good job to get us in the position we're in, um, to be able to bring in four players over the trade and free agency period, uh, once we hadn't secured a coach at that stage, um, was a real, you know, a great effort from those guys to be able to do so. And it probably goes to show that, um, you know, there's a lot more to our club than just the appointment of a senior coach. Um, we've got a lot to offer and, and that's why guys chose to come to our club. Any more questions? 
maybe just one more of uh, David. What's your mantra or your trademark? Are you going to be defensive first or are you going to be a bit of an entertainer? Not sure about entertainer, Steve, eh? but no, I'd like to kick goals. I want to score and, and I want to have a hard edge of de defence to us as well. Um, I think, you know, we, we need to build a platform of capacity to play finals, you know, long term. That's, that's the avenue that we need to go down. Um, but no, I'd, I'd like to be, I'd like to be attacking. Um, but we need to have a, a pretty ruthless defensive side to our game. So, um, so there, there's some elements that we've got to address with the group, mate, when they get back in. But uh, no, I'd like to, I'd like to attack, and then defend, and then win. <laughs>